Philippians, uh, Philippians chapter 1. Again, it's good to be here. It's good to be in God's house. And, uh, it's good to see everyone here. And, uh, I hope you come to receive a blessing today. And, uh, as I was studying this, I heard a, a story about uh, uh, these uh, uh, older couple when they had to begin to uh, forget things. And it was hard for them to remember just everyday things. And so they made a pact together. And they said, well, from now on, when we tell each other things, we'll start writing it down. That way we don't forget what we say to each other. So one day, the, the wife, she was headed to the kitchen, and she hollered at her husband. She said, uh, honey, you want anything? I'm, I'm headed on my way to the kitchen. And, and he said, uh, yeah. He said, uh, as you're going to the kitchen, go ahead and get me a, a ice cream sundae. She, he said, I want chocolate ice cream, and uh, I want whipped cream on top, and with a big old cherry on it. And she said, okay. And he said, we ain't going to write it down. And she said, don't be silly. I'm on my way there now. I'm making it now. So there ain't no way I can forget it. So she goes into the kitchen there and she stays gone for quite some time. And all of a sudden, she comes back into the living room and she sets a plate down in front of him and it's, it's got <coughs> filled with hash browns and it's got eggs on it and it's got bacon piled up on there and and a big old glass of orange juice. She sits down beside him and he looks at it and he looks at her and he goes, I knew you should have wrote it down. You forgot the toast. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, the, the thing is, I, I told that silly story, to, you know, the thing is, memory is something that, that can fail us. You know, I, I tell you, uh, over time, time can fade the memories. You know, sometimes as I think back about things in my childhood, as I get older, I wonder if I'm remembering it the way it was. And uh, I tell you, you know, there's probably going to come a time in my life when when I can't remember some of the things that happened to me uh, in my life. Uh, you know, the, the thing is, what we have to understand that the memory is an amazing thing that we have. And it's a true blessing from God that that God allows us to be able to remember. He, he gives us the, the ability not only to remember things that, that happened to us right now, but He gives us the ability to be able to remember things that happened to us years ago. I tell you, we're able to remember people we meet here now, and we're able to remember people that have passed on into eternity. And I tell you, uh, we're able to remember the, when we experience love for the first time. Uh, we re we're able to remember all the blessings that God has bestowed on us throughout our life. And I tell you, we have to remember that a memory is a true blessing of God. And I tell you, if we go through this time of this week, is uh, we're, we're celebrating Thanksgiving uh, this, this Thursday. And, and I tell you, it's a time when we use our memory to think back over the past year and we think about all that God has done for us and how God has blessed our life. And I tell you, there's not a single person here that God has not poured out blessings on your life. Each and every day of your life, God has blessed us. If you got up this morning and you seen the sunrise, that is a blessing from God. But I tell you, not only do we have physical blessings from God, but I tell you, the, the most important blessings from God are spiritual in nature. And I tell you, also, the, the people that God put in our path from day to day, I tell you, and as we think back and we use our memory to think back of all these blessings over the past year that God has blessed us with, I tell you, uh, memories are very important in our life. And I tell you, I thank God for the memories that He allows us to have and to, to look back on. You know, I tell you, the, the Scripture that we're going to look at today, Paul is dealing with, with memories in, in these uh, Scripture here. You know, uh, Paul is, is looking back and he's thinking about the, the people there at Philippi. Uh, you know, the, the thing, Paul is writing a letter, uh, the, the epistle there to Philippi, and as he does, these memories are surfacing in, in Paul's mind. And, you know, at this point in time in, in, in Paul's ministry, that's about all Paul has is these memories because at this point in time, Paul is in prison in Rome, and, and he's not able to just roam free like he once was able to. He All he has is these memories. He's waiting for execution. But, but for preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and I tell you, as he thinks about 
Uh, what uh, about the people there at Philippi? He reminisces about the relationship of these special people there at the church at, at Philippi. You know, I tell you, as we look at these memories Paul has today that we're fixing to read about, I tell you, we can learn a lot from Paul's memories, and we can learn a lot about how our memories, as we think about the past that God allows us to, to remember the blessings that He's bestowed on us, and how we can look at our memories and, and see how we should uh, think about believers that we come in contact with and the people that God has placed in our past. And today I want to preach a little bit about uh, thanks for the memories. And I want to go ahead and start reading in, in Philippians chapter 1. We're going to read the first 11 verses here. And we're going to talk a little bit about Paul's memories here. It's starting in verse 1. It says, Paul and Timotheus, the, the servant of Jesus Christ, to all the servants in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and the deacons, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the, the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in, in, in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the, the first day until now, being confident of this very thing that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, but I have you in my heart, in, a, in as much as both in my bonds and in the defense of confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my, of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you, all in the in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. And, and ye may approve things that are excellent, and ye may be sincere and without offense until the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Let us pray. You most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I'm thankful for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And Father, I just pray you just be with us today, Lord. Just, uh, just hide, hide me behind the cross, Lord. Give me the word to speak that I might glorify you. And uh, Lord, I just uh, pray for each and every one represented here today, every family, Lord. The Lord, I don't know the deeds, Lord, that you do. And I just pray that uh, you just move today in the service, Lord. Uh, Lord, we just lift you up and uh, Lord, I just pray for each and every need here today, Father, Lord, and I just pray for all the ones that come to be here, Father. Lord, we thank you, we love you, we praise you. For your Christ and I pray. Amen. Amen. You know, and like I said, the word, as we look today, Paul is looking back and he's thinking, he's having memories, he's thinking about the people there at Philippi. Uh, you know, first of all, he has memories of the past. You know what? There is a common memory that he thinks about here, and it's the common memory of salvation. You know, in these verses, Paul, as he addresses the people there at Philippi, first of all, he calls them the saints in Christ Jesus. He also talks about the God our Father. He also speaks of fellowship in the gospel. And in this, this epistle, he also says, uh, calls them brethren eight different times throughout these chapters in this epistle to the, the Philippians. And all these phrases bring to mind a common experience. And that experience is the experience of salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, as Paul writes to these fellow saints uh, at their Philippi, it brings to mind all of their common tasks. And you know, as Paul writes to these people, you know, Paul has to be thinking back about his own salvation. You know, and I'm pretty sure all of y'all are familiar with, with Paul's uh, 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 salvation of men, and it, it's recorded in the book of Acts chapter 9. We know that, that Paul was a, a, a very bad man. And, uh, Paul persecuted the church of God, and, and actually when Paul was saved, he was on his way to, to actually lock Christians up. He was actually persecuting the church of God and as he was on the Damascus road and he saw a bright light and he came in contact with the, the risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ and on that day he, he gave his life to Christ and I tell you Paul was changed forever and, and he began to, 
to preach the gospel and he began to do the, the work of Christ, I'm pretty sure as Paul remembered all the people there at Philippi. And I tell you, I, mean, I know his mind went back to that event of salvation uh, as he uh, gave his life to Christ. But I'm pretty sure he also remembered the uh, what led him to Philippi there? You remember as, as Paul, when he went to Philippi, it was on his second missionary journey. Uh, when him and Silas were together. And, uh, I tell you, Paul wasn't going to, to Philippi at first. Paul was trying to go into Asia to preach, but he said the Holy Spirit wasn't letting him go into Asia to preach. And God forbidden him to go to Asia. And, and that night, he, as he was laying sleeping, he had a vision that, uh, a Macedonian man came to him in a vision and told him to come to Macedonia. And, and he went, it's called, we refer to that as the Macedonia call. And, and we know that Paul went into Macedonia there at Philippi and he, be, he began to preach there. You know that had to come to, to mind for Paul as, as he thought back why he went to, to Philippi. It was because the, the will of God was for him to go there. God directed his path and his feet to go there to Philippi. But you know, I, I'm pretty sure Paul also thought back about all the people that were first saved there at, in Philippi. You know, as, as Paul went there, the, one of the first people that were saved in Philippi was a lady called Lydia. Uh, you know, she was uh, a business lady. She sold fine linen and, and she opened her house up to Paul and, and Silas and uh, they had church at her house. And, and not only that, but uh, a story you're probably really familiar with. Uh, uh, one of the people that were served up, saved there was a little young possessed girl that was in the marketplace and she kept following uh, 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 Paul and, and, and Silas around and uh, she kept uh, talking telling them, uh, you serve the most high God. And she did this day after day and Paul got irritated with her and he cast a demon out of her. And because of her, her masters couldn't make money off of her anymore, that they got mad at Paul and they took it and took Paul and Silas before the magistrate and, and they they brought charges against them and they were locked up in prison. And, and instead of being down and out about being in prison, we know what Paul and Silas did that night. When they were in prison, they had a revival that night. They were singing and praising God and, and so much that an earthquake, God caused an earthquake and he shook the doors of the jail open and the chains fell off of them. And, and I tell you, they didn't escape out of jail. They just stayed there. And because of that, not only, well, because of that, there was a jailer there that was saved that night. When he came in, he thought everybody was done escape, but because they didn't, Paul, he was going to kill himself. And Paul just said, don't keep yourself. We're all still here. And I tell you, because of that, he accepted Christ that night. And not only him, but also his family. I can imagine Paul thought back about all these people that had gave their life to Christ uh, there at Philippi. And I can tell you, uh, you know, that these these memories probably flooded his mind and they filled his heart with thanksgiving and joy. And I, and I tell you, at this time of year, as we look back and, and we thank God for all the things in our life during this Thanksgiving time, I tell you, we need to look back and remember our salvation. And, and we need to thank God about the, the time when, when Christ saved us, when we gave our, our life to Christ. But we also need to thank God for all those Christians that God has placed in our life that, that has has lead, helped lead and helped guide us in our Christian walk. And, and I tell you, well, we're surrounded by so many Christians. And I tell you, we need to look around today and look at all the, all our brothers and sisters in Christ today. And, and I tell you, we need to be thankful and remember, we all have a common salvation today. And it's all in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to be Amen. thankful and remember that this season. Amen. But also, Paul remembered that they had a common service too. You know, in, in verse 1, Paul refers to himself as a, a servant. And that word that he uses there, it means to be a slave. You know, it refers to one that is owned by a master. And I tell you, that's exactly what we are as Christians. I tell you, we're owned by a master. See, we were bought with a price. When Jesus saved us, He gave His blood on the cross of Calvary. 
He purchased us with the price of His holy blood. And I tell you, because of that, we are a slave to Him. And I tell you, Paul mentions also that these people there at Philippi, they were true yoke fellows in, in chapter 4. You know, and he talks about them being laborers in the gospel with Him. You know, the, the believers there at Philippi, they were co-laborers with, with Him there. They stood shoulder to shoulder, side by side with Paul uh, to help him carry out his responsibility in the gospel. And, and you know, the, the thing is, he remembered how they stood with him and how they helped him throughout the years. And I tell you, we need to remember all the people that we have served with throughout the years. How people have stood with us throughout the years. How they have served God throughout the years. How all God has put these people in our past. How many people has God put in our past to, to lift us up and to, to pray for us? And I tell you, without those people, where would we be in our Christian walk, in our, in our Christian life? I tell you, it's good for us to be able to step back and to, to remember these people and to be thankful for what God has done and how God has placed these people in our Christian life. Amen. But we also see that he also has memories of the present. You know, he remembered an uncommon love here at Philippi. You know, the, the he had a special love and a special bond with the people there at Philippi Paul in. You know, these people were dear to Paul's heart. You know, he shared a love that's not found in the world. See, he shared a spiritual love with these people. It transcended the, the kind of love that is in the world. I tell you, the, the thing is, it was a kind of love that we're supposed to have for one another as Christian people. I say, it's different than the kind of love that the world has for one another. I tell you, it's a spiritual love. You know, the, the thing is, when I got saved, God placed a, a special kind of love in my heart that I should have for my brothers and sisters in Christ. And He placed a special kind of love in your heart that you ought to have for your brothers and sisters in Christ. See, the thing is, the world it has a selfish kind of love. They're worried about self-gratification. And I tell you, we're worried about the things of God and the glory of God and the work of God. That's the kind of love that we have in our life. But I tell you, he also remembered about an uncommon labor. See, the thing is, Paul, as he thinks back to these special people, he, re he reflects back about how these people not only loved him, but how they served with him. He, re he reflects how they blessed him in his service there. First of all, they did by praying for Paul. You know, they speak many times about praying for Paul. How many times have you had somebody tell you, I'm, I'm praying for you, brother? I tell you, a lot of times people say that just to be saying it. You know, there's so many people that tell you, I'm praying for you, and it, it, that's as far as it gets. But I tell you, when you got a, a true believer, a brother and sister in Christ that are truly reaching to the throne of God for you, I tell you, that makes a difference in your life. I tell you, that means something. I tell you, but not only did these people pray for Paul, but not only, they didn't stop there. Not only did they pray for Paul, but they also ministered. Paul. Well, if you read on in, in his book, they also sent Ephroditus to, to Rome to minister to Paul while he was in prison there. They didn't stop with just their prayers. They let, those, their prayer, they let God work in their life and use them to minister uh, to Paul. And I tell you, uh, not only is it good to pray for people, we need to let God work through us and to be able to, to minister to people. And that's what uh, these people done for Paul. But not only that, but they also the they also uh, 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 supported Paul in his ministry. Where the other churches didn't support Paul, they went out of their way to support Paul. You know, Paul was, was gracious for all that the church at Philippi done for him. You know, and I tell you, we ought to be grateful uh, throughout our Christian life for all that the people that we have served with throughout our Christian life, all the things that, that they have done to as they serve with us, we ought to be thankful and grateful for every single thing that they've done. You know, I remember every single person, every ministry, before I got saved, that had came to me. You know, I, I remember, for instance, uh, 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 Brother Hawkins. Before I got saved, Brother Hawkins used to come uh, about once every couple months. 
He would come to my home and he would knock on my door and he, he, would, he would witness to me. And I would tell him, uh, Brother Hawkins, I tell you, I, I'm not going to come. He would invite me to church and I would say, I'm not going to come to church where you're at. Uh, and that's his fun. But I would go to church somewhere at And every single time he done that, I would come down here to Wood and Grove Baptist Church. And I tell you, that man right there, his faithfulness for God, it Amen. kept me coming. It kept me hearing Amen. the Word of God. And I'm thankful for that man. Amen. And I tell you, God was using that man to, to reach out to me. And, and I tell you, I'm thankful for that. But I'm also grateful for all the people I've served with here for the past 18 years. I tell you, uh, I'm thankful for every single thing that every single person here does. I, I, I tell you, from the person that, that teaches the little kids, from the person that plays the piano, from the person that, that takes out the trash, from the person that does the sound, from the from the deacon, uh, if you just sit on a pew and smile, I tell you, you don't know how much that means to me here, uh, how much it touches my heart. And I tell you, every single thing you do here matters. I tell you, see, this church is, is more than just one single person. This church is more than just a couple of people. I tell you, this church is made up of every single saved soul that God Amen. has placed here. And I tell you, every single person is important. Your ministry is important here at Wheeler Grove Baptist Church. I tell you, just like Aaron was important to Moses, just like the 300 was important to Gideon, uh, just, just like uh, the mighty men were important to David, you are important to the Wheeler Grove Baptist Church because we need you here. Every single thing you do here is important in Wheeler Grove. But also, we also see that Paul's memories here are positive memories. You know, you know as you look at the book of, of Philippians, you know, there's only one thing that you can actually look at in that book and take a little bit of a little bit of negativity out of it. And that's one part he talks about two ladies in, in this book who are about Christian unity. And that's all the thing he says. The rest of the book is pretty much positive. And as you look at that, you say, Well, was this the perfect church? Is this the church that everybody's looking for? The perfect church? And I say, No. It wasn't the perfect church. I tell you, this church here at Philippi, it was made up of what all other churches are, redeemed sinners. Amen. It had people saying the wrong things at the wrong time. It had people doing the wrong things at the wrong time. It had people gossiping, just like people gossip everywhere. It, it was full of sinners, redeemed sinners. But I tell you, Paul didn't choose to reflect on all the negativity in the church. Paul, he, he chose to, to uh, lift up the positive things in the life of those people. See, the thing is, these people were doing some great things for the Lord. And Paul chose to look at the positive things in their life. I tell you, see, all churches are made up of all the same people with just different faces and different things. You know, I heard a preacher preach one time. He said he was a pastor of the church. And, and in that church, he said it was the most evilest woman he had ever met in his life. He said over the years he preached there, uh, he said when God allowed him to leave, he said he was so happy to get rid of that woman. He said the very next church that he pastored, he went down there and he realized she had an evil twin sister that was at that church. <laughs> But I tell you, that's the way churches are. I tell you, they're all the same. That is, I tell you, there's the same people with different names. We're all sinners. I tell you, there's no perfect church out there. There's Amen. no perfect people. I tell you, we're all sinners saved by the grace of God. Amen. And I tell you, the, the thing is, we need to realize, we need to quit focusing on the negative the part of people, and we need to start focusing on the positive part of people. I tell you, you can find positive in anybody if you just look for it. See, that's what Paul was doing. Paul could have looked at the Philippi and said, hey, you're doing this, this, and this wrong. But I tell you, Paul chose to look at all the good things that they were doing in their Christian life. See, Paul knew that there was no such thing as a perfect church, and he knew that there was no such thing as a perfect Christian. And we have to understand that in our life. 
We need to start recognizing that we need to focus on the positive. See, the thing is, if I truly love you like I should, see, true love makes us focus on the positive side of things. And if I'm loving you like I should, I'm not going to zero in on the negative things of you. I'm going to focus in on the positive things. And when I do see something negative in your life, instead of gossip about you or, or go behind your back or, or talk bad about you, I'm going to pray for you. And I, I'm going to try to help you out. But I want you to understand this. When I say that, we're talking about negative, I don't want you to misunderstand me. I don't want you to misunderstand the, the, the thing that, that love turned a blind eye on sin. I don't want you to think that, hey, I'm saying that, hey, if you have sin in your life, we're just going to turn a blind eye on that sin and, and just let that keep on going on. That's not what I'm saying here. Amen. You know, Jesus didn't turn a blind eye to sin. I mean, Jesus, in the life of believers and unbelievers, He rebuked sin, but He did it out of love. And see, that's, I think that's where we have a problem today as, as believers. We have a problem when we come to somebody and, and talk to them about their sin. We never come to a place of love and talk to them about it. We come from a place of anger. And that's where we get in, in, in the problem. I tell you, we need to come to them from a place of love. That's the way God wants us to approach it. See, if we don't come to them from a place of love, that's why we lack a, a, a genuine, when we don't have a genuine love, we don't get come to a place of forgiveness and we don't have people saved. We don't have people uh, 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 return to revival. We don't have people giving their life to Christ because we come to them in anger instead of love. And I tell you, Paul does something in these verses here uh, that shows us an example of how we need to handle things with love. You know, Paul takes the time in these verses here to thank the people there at Philippi. You know, I, I tell you, it's a lot of times in our Christian life that we don't take the time to thank all the people that has blessed us throughout Amen. our Christian life. Amen. You know, this as we look back over the past year and we look back over our Christian life at this Thanksgiving time, I want you to think back about all the people that God has placed in your path. All the people that has truly blessed you. And I tell you, I, I want you to... It don't have to be today. It don't have to be in person. But maybe write them a letter. Call them on the phone. Shoot them a text. Or maybe in person. Just at some point in time. Just give them a thank you. Say, hey, you don't know what you meant to me in my Christian life. I tell you, God has really used you to bless me. And I just want to say thank you. I just want to say thank you. I tell you, you don't know how much that would mean to those people that God has used in your life. I tell you, because it really, God, the, the encouragers sometimes need to be encouraged too. And I tell you, this holiday season, what do you remember? You know, Paul was remembering those people there at Philippi and all the things that they had, they had done for him. But most of all, he was remembering his salvation. And I ask you this morning, during this holiday season, during this time of Thanksgiving, can you remember back to your salvation? Amen. See, that's the most important thing that you have in this life is your salvation experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. If you don't have that this morning, I want to give you an opportunity as a song leader and piano player come as we stand and have a word of prayer before we have a meditation. Let us pray. Give us a kind of and Father, Lord, I'm thankful for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, I just pray you to be with us in this invitation, Father. Lord, I don't want to need for what that you do, and I just pray that your will be done. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen.